Joining us now, Parents Defending Education Vice President. She is Astra Nomani. Astra is known as a powerful activist. People stand up and listen and wake up when Astra speaks. Now, Astra, take this on. We, we, we see Chicago's teachers' union doing something that not even New York City's teachers' union or the school district or L.A. is doing. The socialist Jesse Sharkey, who runs a teachers' union there, is saying we will not return to school unless kids are forced to take COVID tests even without their parents' consent. Have you been hearing these demands elsewhere, too? What do you think of this? Oh, yeah. I mean, across the country, we're getting reports from parents about this hostage taking that is happening right now in our school systems. Unfortunately, so many unions that are powerful in so many school districts are holding children hostage. And this is really criminal. And really, what we are facing is a worldwide crisis. The UN, the World Bank, and UNICEF have come out with a statistic that this generation of kids is going to have $17 trillion in, in, in earnings potential loss over their lifetime because of these decisions that are being made. And, you know, I'm wearing this shirt that says, follow the money, follow the ESSER money, because what's happening is that public policymakers have given school districts a COVID piggy bank that's called ESSER for the uh, uh, Elementary and Secondary School Recovery Act, but they're spending it and misspending it on things like critical race theory and social emotional learning, not getting kids back to school. Interesting stuff. So the federal taxpayer is funding, they thought, schools to handle a yes. pandemic, but it's going to other uses. The other thing, too, Oster, is that right. teachers' unions are threatening to walk out in Oakland, California, and San Francisco. We're hearing the same information potentially out of Atlanta, out of Detroit, out of Newark, New Jersey. And, Oster, you wonder if the president should step in and fire them like Reagan did with air traffic controllers. What do you think? Yeah, you know, um, I don't know if you know this, but when we were together in the Wall Street Journal newsroom, I was actually the union rep for the newsroom reporters. And unions can serve a purpose that can be well-intentioned for society, but right now they are abusing their powers. And this is where the policymakers need to step in and be the grown-ups in the room, because the ones who are suffering are the children. There are so many parents that are just, you know, Go, going, um, you know, t t and they're like just struggling so much in their in their families and in their homes. And last night, I had dinner with a woman here in Fairfax County, Virginia. She was precinct captain for the Democratic Party, and she's fed up with the unions and their assertion of power because her son hasn't gone back to school for a week because this county too has had this sort of work stoppage happening. And so this is going to play out politically as well in the midterm elections. And this is going to be a really bad impact for the Democratic Party if they don't get control over what the unions are doing. Yeah, it hurts the Democrat image, right? Because, you know, the Democrats are always saying we're about the working poor and the lower income classes and the working classes. But, you know, children are now out of school in Chicago. It's an area where there was 4,500 shootings last year and 800 murders. So now children are out on the streets in a killing ground for the young. Let's listen to the White House press secretary on this, on what's going on. Watch. Will he get directly involved at a certain point? How many days have to go by before he jumps in? Well, we, have, we are in regular touch with uh, teachers, uh, school administrators, labor leaders across the country uh, nearly every single day, including in Chicago, and uh, that, that will continue. And we will continue to make the case for schools to be open. Okay, that sounds good, right? And, you know, it sounds good that, you know, everything comes up COVID for more spending. It sounds good to give out more money. It sounds great to be in touch, right? But is this leadership? Well, the thing is, oh, the sorry, is that, problem is that, yeah, no, the one, one uh, you know, stakeholder group that she did not mention were the parents, and that has been the problem for the last 18 months, is that they don't listen to the parents on any of this. Um, you know, and talk about spending money. Like one example that I have right here, remember Merrick Garland, he put a hit on parents, right, calling us domestic terrorists? Well, this is a contract with which Fairfax County Public Schools is set spending $2.5 million for the company that Merrick Garland's 
son-in-law co-founded. So they're lining their pockets, you know, in government with the same issues of corruption that have, uh, you know, kind of uh, held hostage all communities whenever we have to have advances in society. I mean, these guys are basically in in doing the bidding of the unions and then doing the big bidding of big tech and what are they sacrificing our kids and that's that's really the tragedy here and and they're going to keep losing elections if they don't start paying attention to the parents and the children that they're trying to protect great point great reporting there and great insights Asra Namani it's always a pleasure to have you back on come back again soon okay